All right, let's look at the second FRQ in the 2025 AP Physics 2 exam. So we have a sample of monatomic ideal gases sealed in a thermally conducting container by a movable piston of mass M and area A. So this thing has a mass M, area A. Container is a large water bath that is held at a constant temperature T0. The piston is free to move with negligible friction. At the instant shown, the gas is in thermal equilibrium with the water bath. The piston is at rest and the gas occupies a volume V0 and the pressure above the air is P ATM. On the dot representing the piston, draw and label forces that are exerted on the piston. Each force must be represent, represented by a distinct arrow. Oh wait, okay, so we have, has mass, so some gravity, and it's a first on our free body diagram. What else do we include? Anything is touching it. In this case, nothing else is physically touching it, but we have gas exerting some pressure. So this is gonna be a force from the gas. And then we also have air above it pushing on it. So atmospheric pressure, so force from the atmosphere. So we're gonna have three arrows like that. And the net forces, they, they're not saying that the lengths need to add up and match, but we know that because it's at rest and it's just sitting there in equilibrium, the acceleration is zero. You don't have to write that, but you don't have to make the arrows like exactly line up, but they are, there's gonna be one force upwards, two forces downwards. Derive an expression for the internal energy of the gas in terms of M, A, V, zero, P, atmosphere, and physical constants as appropriate. Begin your derivation by running a fundamental physics principle or an equation from the reference information. Okay, so if you're not sure where to start, because a lot of times people might start with thermodynamics, but they gave you a free body diagram, so you are better believe you are going to use that in some way. So in this case, because the acceleration is zero, we know the F net is gonna be zero. If we make up positive, that's gonna be force from the gas, minus force from the atmospheric pressure, minus mg is gonna equal zero. And we know the force from the gases, because we do it in terms of pressure and volume, is just this, is, is that the force from the gas is gonna be the pressure of the gas. And we don't know the pressure of the gas, right? So that's the pressure of the gas times the area, minus the force of the atmosphere, which is the pressure of the atmosphere, times the area of the plate minus mg is equal to zero. So we need to figure out what the pressure of the gas is, and that's where we're gonna use PV equals NRT. Well, actually we don't know N on RRT or anything like that. So let me see, NRT, do we know how many moles there are? Let's see, mass area, nope, they didn't give us the moles, so we can't just directly use that necessarily, but we do know the V0, we know the T0, and we know, let me think about it. Oh, so we don't know the NRG, but we can, we know the other thing we could say, if you're kind of stuck at this point, which is why I paused for a second, is we just say like, well, the internal energy is the three halves NRT, right? And so we, we know it's equal to the pressure times the volume here, right? So we just need to solve for the pressure of the gas here. It's gonna be Mg plus pressure of the atmosphere times the area um, and then divided by the area, right? And then uh, times the volume is gonna be NRT. So, so then three halves NRT is equal to three halves pressure of the gas times the volume of the gas. We know the pressure of the gas is this, Mg plus P atmosphere A divided by A. And then the volume of the gas they say was V0. And so let's take a look. Do we have it in terms of the things that we need? M. G, that's fine, atmosphere is fine, A is fine, and V0 is fine, so okay, so that would be like that. You could have divided that out but and simplified if you want, but that's the general expression, okay? Block of also mass M is placed on the piston at times T equals T0. So now we're adding more weight and it's slowly lowered. The piston, because it's slowly and we have that bath, right? So the temperature is probably gonna be constant during that motion. Piston comes to rest at T equals TF when the block is completely released. Okay, on the axis, sketch the expected relationship between pressure and volume. Gas for the thermodynamic of uh, the gas for the thermodynamic process and it goes during the time t equal t zero t f. Draw an arrow to sketch to represent the direction. So we're going to start at say p zero and then v zero. And because we've added a weight, we're going to compress the gas. The volume is going to decrease actually. So we're going to put the p v zero over here. Okay, now because you've doubled the mass, right? Like it's gonna lower, it's not gonna be half the volume because it's just like you almost, you almost, well, that's internal energy. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just gonna decrease and it's gonna decrease 
not to half as much because it's like it's not like twice the weight necessarily because of the atmospheric pressure onto it. So I don't think you need to get a specific number. The expected relationship, I I, I bet you would just need to sketch in um, a constant temperature pressure, constant. Sorry, the pressure is going to increase because if the temperature is constant, so PV equals NRT. So the temperature is constant because we've got that water bath. So the volume is going to go down. So the pressure is going to go up. So what I would do is probably put the P0, put the point down here because I need to go up. So we're going to start there and then it's going to go up to another point in this direction like that. Okay. And that is like one of those constant temperature or isothermic uh, curves there like that. Isothermal. With the block still on the piston, the temperature of the water bath changed to a new constant temperature, T nu. The gas occupies the original volume V0 when the sample of gases and the water come to equilibrium. Is T nu greater than or less than or equal? So now we shrunk the volume originally, but now we've increased, we, well, okay. We've changed the temperature so that now we've gone up to the volume. So again, think about the PV equals NRT relationship here. So what we're doing is we're increasing the temperature and uh, well, sorry, now we're increasing the temperature. The the occupies the original volume, so the volume stays the same, but we've increased the pressure of the gas, but the volume is constant now, or the same as it was before. Okay, so the the pressure uh, because you added an extra weight on top compared to the original when it's at the original volume, it added a weight. There's now more downward pressure, which means the gas has to exert a larger force upwards. So just to kind of compare it to this scenario, like we've added that we're going to make this twice the mass. So that means that the air is not going to push down. The gas is, is not going to push any harder. The gas now has to push harder to compensate for the extra weight. So that's going to increase the force from the gas. That's going to increase the pressure from the gas. So the pressure goes up. The volume is the same. The temperature has to go up. And so that's where we say the T nu is greater than T zero. At least one, reference your answer by at least one of the futures for part A and B. I'm doing it from the free body diagram. So increasing um, the MG from adding from the added weight would increase the force from the gas upward which implies a higher pressure at the same volume. And that would inc imply a higher temperature. From PV equals NRT. Okay, so that's how I would argue it. Could you argue it from part B? Let's see. The internal energy of the gas. I mean, maybe I don't know. It's not my favorite. I mean, I would you know you could reference something like there. Um, how about from here? Um, you know, you're going from this part, and you're no, you're now going back to the original volume. By I don't know. I guess you would. I guess you would have the same pressure. So I guess you could say like, oh, well, you would move over here. It's not my favorite way to explain it. I think by force is a little bit easier, but you could say like, well, we have to keep the pressure the same because the if we're going to expand back up, we're going to increase the volume and keep the pressure constant. But I don't know. Like, I think, I think at the most part, you're still referencing part A in a way. So that would be my preference to answer that question.